the meta sense, what is being said is, Hey, vengeful spirit, don't attack security guards at Freddy's, go set up happiest day. Which leaves the question of who or what is Glitch Bear. Glitch Bear is helping the vengeful spirit to put CC back together, but is very antagonistic in tone and characterization. He also hates the puppet master, which we've determined is Henry, and he's represented by a corruption of Fred Bear. Well, I can't answer that. Let's have another chat after FNAF 5. Ooh. Throughout the game, you have to traverse through the world by kind of skipping through dimensions and wormholes and entering glitches. But you're told not to go too many glitches down. If you do go too many glitches down, you end up here, in a red forest, at a red lake, with whatever this thing is. He's fishing. You can walk up to him, and if you talk to him, he says, I'm sorry to say that you have gone too deep into the code. There is no way back out. My name is Old Man Consequences. Come, have a seat, and let's fish for a while. You have nowhere else to go. Keep in mind, there are multiple endings of FNAF World, including one where the entire universe ends because you chose Fredbear as your party leader, and then you talk to Fredbear, and it causes a paradox. There's also one where you fight Chipper from Chipper and Sun Slumber, and he complains that FNAF is more popular of a game than his. So yeah, not everything in the game's canon, this ending, this old man consequences, isn't something that actually happened by definition. This is a dead end. It's just a, it's just a silly end screen. Like when the universe ended. It's not real. Right? Well, there is one way out. You can glitch one glitch further by entering the lake. If you rapidly alternate left and right descending into the lake, you will then fall for a while before you see this. This screen has two main interpretations, an angel welcoming you, with its arms spread out and its wings behind it, or the view of three people from behind being lit by a television screen, with all three holding each other in their arms. I think it's that one, but I won't be able to explain why for quite a while. You'll know I'm getting back to talk about this topic when I start an entire section called Mr. Hippo's Wild Ride. We're gonna head on out of this long, long, long discussion of the games for a minute, and we're gonna talk about real life. FNAF World was released in January 2016, like I said, and immediately it received a lot of backlash, and I don't know why. It was kind of janky, but like, it's a stupid RPG bear game, who cares? Well, Scott cared. He refunded everyone who bought the game, reworked it a little bit, and then re-released it for free. One of the reasons besides this initial bad press that people don't ever really think about this game that much is solely because Markiplier didn't play it. Markiplier, more so even than MatPat, put FNAF on the map by making a hit series playing the games. I talked earlier about how FNAF is perfect for YouTube Let's Plays, and it really is, and Markiplier was the poster child for that. But he skipped FNAF World because it didn't seem interesting to him. So the vast, vast, vast majority of the fanbase who don't play the games and just watch Markiplier play them, and then hop on over and watch MatPat explain them, didn't really experience FNAF World. Scott has gone on to say that FNAF World was his biggest mistake, and I think part of that was the poor reception. He says he regrets how he tied it into the lore and made it canon. And I think that either one, because he made a decision in that game that he's now bound by because it's canon, or two, it's the key to everything, and nobody played it so they don't understand the series. And I think it's that second one. Without FNAF World, no one's gonna sit there and say to themselves, yeah, yeah, I think there's a mirror dimension of video game characters that are impacted by the real world, and the FNAF is actually a parallel story of the main gameplay and the mini games being experienced in parallel universes and culminating in these two protagonists meeting the FNAF 3's finale. Because why would you think that? Unless you're me, and you wrote over 100 pages of FNAF explanations and dedicated nine years of your life to study this nonsense. There's a house in FNAF World you can enter to meet Deskman. Deskman says, Well, what are you doing here? I'm busy. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Now it's all a mess. Of course, now there's only one thing to do. Come back later, and maybe I will tell you more. Which is probably a reference to FNAF World being a mess with this being Scott. And in Dude, it talks during a his boss battle about how annoying FNAF is. And the Chipper boss battle was obviously very meta, so it makes sense that this is a tongue in cheek way of apologizing about the state of the game, as well as hinting to what's going to come out next when you come back later. Much like FNAF 4, FNAF World had a Halloween update, which came out on May 13th, 2016. It's called the Halloween update because it's themed around Halloween, not because it came out on Halloween. Not everything is so literal, guys. Don't be so literal. After you apply the update, in order to play the new content, you have to talk to Deskman, who says, It's a vicious cycle, you know? But then, most things in life are. The pendulum swings one way, then it swings the other. Now we return to darkness. Something terrible is coming. Come back later. Maybe I will tell you more. This is in reference to Scott working on FNAF 5. He said in an interview after the fact that FNAF 4 was so dark that he needed to take a break and work on something else, which is why FNAF World is so fun, even though it does have dark undertones. It's all puns and, and colors, uh, it does have some dark comedy, but overall it's just so fun. But now, the pendulum is swinging back the other way, toward darkness, as he starts in earnest on FNAF 5. It's kind of funny, when I was writing this paragraph, I was watching through part of MatPat's playthrough, and he literally said this exact same thing without the hindsight of Scott confirming it years later. I think what it is is, you had FNAF, now you went to FNAF World, which was light, happy, and fun, mm -hmm. now it's swinging back to the darkness spectrum, and everyone's been talking about the sister location, okay. the, the new FNAF 5, I guess at this point, FNAF yeah, 5. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking of it like a... So I guess I'm just stupid. If you talk to Fred Bear, who's standing outside Deathman's house, he's next to a big lock, and he says, The chain bombed. End of story. I have already put in my application at the Fazburger down the street. The problem is that now, he has gone insane. We don't know what he is making, and we can't reach the room where it is being kept. Whatever it is, it has everyone around here on edge. This is where the Halloween characters and others were set to have their code recycled for spin-off games. Put a stop to those games and save those characters. Then find the last area and uncover its dark secrets. So the update is really a collection of minigames you have to beat to unlock characters to beat the final final boss. Deskman is referred to again, assuming he's literally Scott, but at the same time, our metaphor of him being Henry, using FNAF World to communicate with spirits still works. The game maker is going a little crazy. Maybe because his daughter died. Maybe because he made something terrible. The minigames included are FNAF 57, Freddy in Space. Freddy in Space is a send up to Metroid, and depending on how you beat it, you can unlock Coffee, Purple Guy, or Jacko Bonnie. We'll talk about Jacko Bonnie in a second. Foxy Fighters, a parody of Star Fox. You can unlock Jacko Chica or Nightmare Balloon Boy. These characters first appeared in the Halloween update for FNAF 4, along with Jacko Bonnie and other Halloween type characters. Scott made it super duper clear that that update was not canon, but now the characters kind of are. Do a barrel roll! Do a barrel roll! Sorry, I'm not sure what came over me. Bingo! Got him! Bingo! Got him! Doggone it! Don't forget me! Don't worry! Whippy's here! Do something! You won't be tired of my voice, will you? Foxy.exe. This is Sonic.exe, but Foxy. Listen to my voice, and you will find the key. This isn't even really a game, you just kind of walk and have to listen to Foxy. In the first section, he says, Listen to my voice, and you'll find the key. Meaning, each section, you just listen to him. Second section, he says, When you can see, how fast can you finish? If you walk, you'll eventually see Freddy, so you have to walk in the opposite direction instead of touching him, or you lose. If you do lose, Foxy takes up the whole screen and says, All your base are belong to us. Because the whole game is
This is a rage platformer, which were all over the place back when Flash games still existed. It's all trial and error, and you have to not be killed by this rainbow, who gets progressively more insulting as you go until you run out of lives. Point. Nice, nailed it. You can do it! <laughs> the game doesn't display your lives, but the rainbow eventually gets sped up and kicks you out based on your number of deaths. Uh. No, it isn't. Stop lying to me. No. I don't believe you. Oh, what? What? <laughs> yeah, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> also, the rainbow is voiced by Debbie Derryberry, the voice of Jimmy Neutron. You can do it! Huh? Also, also, Toy Chica is voiced by Amber Lee Connors. You can try to you. She's like a legit voice actor. She voices Keek in Attack on Titan, and also a bunch of other major and minor roles in animes I've never heard of. I'll fire this pistol, and then you'll be dead. And she got her start as Android 18 in Dragon Ball Z Abridged. How quickly Bravado goes out the window when you're flat on your ass. Bingo! Got him! How is the strangest thing about this game? The fact that there's a mission where Android 18 gets relentlessly mocked by Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy! Right now it's time for school! Better activate bedroom Android! <laughs> we want. Depending on how fast you beat it, you can unlock Mr. Chipper or Anim Dude. If you talk to Purple Guy, he says, Oh, and don't confuse me with the actual Purple Guy. I'm just a game sprite. Hmm. So maybe this sprite isn't William, because it's a representation of him on the flip side, corrupted by William's murders. Hmm. After getting a good team, you can head into Geist Lair, the boss of which is Purple Geist. And then you find out the real boss is Chica's Magic Rainbow. And when you win, you appear behind Deskman again. I'm impressed. What are you doing here? Can't you see that I'm busy? You deactivated my gains. I don't know what else to do. I don't want to disappoint people. But my mind isn't right. I've made something terrible. Her name is Baby. It's too late to deactivate her. I'm sorry. Once again, if you interpret this man as Scott, then he's saying these games were bad, and now he's made something also of low, terrible quality, and then his name is Baby. Or if this is Henry, then you've destroyed his attempts to reach the flip side, and now his mind isn't right, and he's created Baby. But who is Baby? The show will begin momentarily. Everyone, please stay in your seats. It's important to note that these yellow eyes are not square, they have a star shape. This is not the same person. This is not the remnant injected human who spoke to Cece earlier. It's another pair of eyes who maybe was able to communicate to Cece in some way, and is also this baby person. I promise all this will make sense in like five minutes. But also, if you already know what happens in FNAF 5, then I'm probably really annoying you. Which is fine, because I am annoying. Also, Desk Guy is dead, so it's possible that after making Baby, Henry killed himself. That is what happened in the books. In the books, William kills Charlie. Henry then takes this doll and cries over it, and so Charlie's remnant and his agony mix together, and Charlie possesses the doll. So then Henry builds four progressively older-looking robots so that Charlie can have her essence put into them and grow up like a normal person. And the fourth one he makes is Baby. He also tells Charlie that it was actually her brother Sam that died, but in reality, his wife took Sam and then just left because he'd gone crazy and was building a bunch of robots. So after Henry builds Baby, he, he builds it and like he's really angry, and he, he puts all his anger and malice into it, and after he does that, he realizes he, he's done messed up, so he kills himself. And he also instructs his sister, who's gonna be raising Charlie, to never let Baby out of her closet. And so William steals her and turns her into Baby. So these events in the game are currently one-to-one -one with the book, in that after Charlie died, Henry builds a robot that becomes Baby and then kills himself. In the very near future, this will no longer be one-to-one -one with the books. Okay, but we still gotta figure out who is Baby. And that answer can be found in... Sister locations title and trailer were released on May 21st, 2016, about a week after the FNAF World Halloween update. If you've been memorizing every single little detail of this video so far, which I hope you have been, because there will be a test, then the words sister location might make you remember the line in FNAF 3 when Fungi says there was a spring lock failure at a sister location. This has nothing to do with that, even a little bit at all, probably. But that is what everybody thought when this game was announced. So we were all primed going into it to think it would be about something totally different than what it was actually about. Sister location released on October 7th, 2016. But you better believe there were some shenanigans on Scott's website leading up to the release. There was never just one. Gee, I wonder why people thought this would be about an actual sister location. There's a little of me in every body. It's actually the opposite of what ends up happening, but whatever. Don't hold it against us. These are those big bad things I hate, and they're, they're just so stupid. I hate them. Canceled due to leaks. This was part of a hoax where Scott kind of pretended the game wasn't gonna come out because someone had leaked it. But if you write the image, it's actually about the restaurant featured in the game. The grand opening of Circus Baby's Pizza World has apparently been canceled due to gas leaks. The source code for the website included a schedule for different animatronics to be rented out, giving us the names Baby, Melora, Funtime Freddy, and Funtime Foxy. It also included phrases like Afton Robotics, Chica's Party World, Client Directory, Private Birthday Booking, Children Entertainment, Service Log, Maintenance, and CRMN Inst. People debate about what CRMN Inst means with the most popular speculation of being Criminal Institute or Crewman Installation. I'll explain exactly what that stands for later. The Steam description reads in part, Welcome to Circus Baby's Pizza World, where family fun and interactivity go beyond anything you've seen at those other pizza places. So clearly this is a dig at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Unlike every other FNAF game, Sister Location is not a title where you sit in one spot and have to defend against animatronics for five progressively hard levels. Sister Location is a full actual video game. Each night is a completely different challenge with a strong focus on narrative with full voice acting. Buckle up, because we're going to talk about a whole lot of story right now. Obviously, when it comes to the story of any FNAF games, there are three aspects. One is the story that's actively being told. Like FNAF 2, the story is Jeremy surviving the week and then being put on the day shift. The second part is the story being told in the background. So, like the mini games, the phone guy phone calls. Part three is the lore. That would be Shadow Freddy, Shadow Bonnie, Chica missing her beak, etc. Sister Location being completely linear means that all of these things are experienced by the player at specific times in a specific order. There are no random just background Easter eggs. You're being told a story, interwoven with another story, as well as being fed information about the series as a whole. And that's really the only way to cover the game, so this might get a little confusing. The game opens with a dark cutscene panning past Baby. I'll play it for you now. There's no doubting what you've achieved on a technical level. These are clearly state of the art. There are just certain design choices that were made for these robots that we don't fully understand. We were hoping that you could shed some light on those. She can dance. She can sing. She's equipped with built-in healing tech, translating balloons right at her fingertips. She can take song requests. She can even dispense ice cream. With all due respect, those are the design choices we were curious about, Mr. Afton. 
So first of all, confirmation of William Afton is the name of purple guy in the games. Secondly, we seem to now be told that William Afton made Baby. This board member is questioning certain design choices. So one, maybe Baby is dangerous for some reason. Two, it seems like even if Henry made Baby in some capacity that William took her over as his own, they were partners, so that kind of makes sense. And three, but most importantly, William Afton is British. And that is so smart. I love that Scott did that. That literally makes everything in the series so much simpler. Sister location.